Many years ago, one of my daughters had a secret. Now, this was the kind of secret that you don't want to tell your dad. But it was also the kind of secret that just can't remain hidden. So when she was 15 years old, she told me. And it scared me. I saw it was a problem, and I wanted to help her fix it. Her secret was that she was attracted to girls. It had to have been hard for her to tell me. It was sure hard for me to hear it. And I thought if she would just change her mind, everything would be okay. So being the wise father that I was, I made it my goal to help her change her mind. So here's what I did. I let her know how disappointed I was, and then I waited for her to change. <laughs> and I waited, and I waited. I thought I had all the time in the world to wait, but endless time is just an illusion. And that illusion was shattered for me on the 23rd of September, 2012. When my daughter was just 26 years old, she died from a very rare cancer. You know, after helping her fight that awful disease and then watching helplessly as it took her life, that secret doesn't seem like such a big deal anymore. But back then, it felt enormous. And I hope that hearing my story will help you understand what I mean when I say acceptance is the first step to love. My dream is that you'll get it for yourself. And then you can embrace that idea with me that acceptance is the first step to love. Her name was Leah Catherine Anderson. She was the youngest of our four daughters and our special surprise baby. <laughs> she was a happy youngster, and from a very early age, she was different from her sisters. She liked playing with trucks and cars and getting dirty, helping me in the yard. Now, they all four love to act out stories, especially Disney stories. And whenever they did, Cat always took the role of the prince. Now, as a teenager, things began to change. My wife and I, we'd already been through this transition to adolescence with her three sisters. But with Cat, it was different. She was dealing with depression. And that depression just sucked the life out of her. And her happy disposition changed to this sullen lethargy. And you have an advantage over my wife and me because you already know about her secret. Kat knew. She knew how hard it was going to be to tell us. It had to have seemed like just a no-win situation to her. But she hadn't told us yet. And we didn't know if this was just teen angst or something else. We just knew it was awful. We blamed ourselves, and we desperately needed help, but we couldn't even ask for help. We were frozen by feelings of embarrassment and shame. And the downward spiral continued, and things got worse and worse, and it seemed like they couldn't possibly get any worse. And that's when she came out to us. I couldn't believe it. You see, I'm the kind of person that I have spent my whole life trying to learn the rules and doing my best to follow them. And, of course, doing my best to hide my mistakes and my failures. But not Kat. It seemed to me that she was choosing anything and everything she could to distance herself from us and from our faith. Now, I don't remember what my exact words were in that moment. But my message was clear. This is unnatural. There's something wrong with you, and it needs to be fixed. 
You know, I, I couldn't even hear what she was telling me because of all the things I was projecting onto her. Imagine how much courage it took for her to reveal her most intimate secret to her parents, who she knew wouldn't accept what she was telling them. I couldn't see it in that moment, but looking back, I see that she was the bravest person I ever knew. And it breaks my heart to think how my rejection must have felt to her. I didn't want to reject my daughter. I just couldn't see any other way. I wanted her to have the best life possible. But all I could see for her as a lesbian were problems. It didn't occur to me that it was people like me that created those problems. And in our faith, homosexuality was a sin. And the only way forward was for her to change. And she clearly wasn't going to do that. So I realized I need a new approach. I need to stop trying to fix her. But this was not acceptance. You see, I hoped that without pressure from me that she would be able to see her own brokenness. And then she could find a way back to the happy, healthy young woman that I remembered. Instead, this quiet, Confidence emerged, and everything about her said, this is who I am, and it has nothing to do with you. I began to realize that if I were ever going to understand what was going on, I needed to focus on myself and not on my daughter. And I made a critical decision to deeply examine my own beliefs. I was no longer satisfied to just repeat the answers I'd been taught. I needed to know what I believed, and I needed to know why. Cat was my reason. Now, the Bible was our guide, and I brought my questions to it. And I was surprised at how little was there. Just a few verses scattered here and there throughout this huge book. Now, in my faith, homosexuality was a big deal. And I was confused. Why wasn't there more? Now, what little I found did seem to be against homosexuality. But as I dug just a little deeper, I began to see that these biblical passages had nothing to do with the questions I was asking. And I found I could no longer use the Bible to support my rejection of my daughter's sexual orientation. Now, this transition took a lot longer than it had to. And I have struggled to understand why. As much as I loved my daughter, why was it so hard for me to just simply accept her as she was? As I peeled back the layers, I began to see I, too, was seeking acceptance in my faith community. I was very afraid of their rejection. I'd seen it over and over when people disagreed on some points of theology and then they were never seen or heard from again. Now, that fear was like an anchor holding me back. But my love for Kat was greater than my fear. Now, as I've become more outspoken as an ally, for the most part, people in my faith community seem to have withdrawn to a polite silence. But not everyone. Not too long ago, someone told me that I had lowered my theology to meet my pain. <laughs> this person had no idea how hard I fought to hold on to that theology. And his comment made me angry. But it also helped me remember when 
I used to think like that. And he helped me remember my journey. And it left me with a question. I think it's kind of important. You say, I've lowered my theology to meet my pain. What good is theology that doesn't meet us in our pain? <laughs> Somewhere along the way, someone asked me to explain to them when I chose to be a heterosexual. <laughs> There are many things in life that I don't understand, but I know my own experience. And I was attracted to girls long before I knew anything about sexuality. <laughs> I clearly remember when I was five years old, there was this little girl in my class. And when she walked in the room, my heart skipped a beat. <laughs> and this flood of emotion came washing over me. Now, if someone had told me that that was unnatural or an abomination, it wouldn't have changed anything. It would have just added confusion and shame to the mix. Confusion and shame. That's what my daughter felt. And it was coming from me. How could I have been so blind to the hurt I caused her? Now, Kat knew that I was on this journey, but we didn't talk about it until one night I decided I would tell her how things were going with me, sort of a state of the dad address. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, Kat, I can tell this is who you are, and I could not love you any more completely. I am glad you're gay. You see, her coming out brought me face to face with some very ugly parts of myself and my community. Things I had to face head on. And I'm a better person for it. And I began to see that this moral high ground taken by people like me is less about morality and a whole lot more about fear of things we don't understand. And that fear caused me to behave in some very unloving ways, and I couldn't even see it. If only I could go back and do it all over again. But none of us gets a do-over. What if I could write a letter to myself and send it back in time? What would I say? Dear Jim, I'm writing to you from your future. There's some things I need to give you a heads up about. But first, I want to tell you, you're a good dad. Not because you get it right all the time, <laughs> but because you love your family. There's some heavy things coming your way, and that love will guide you to the best possible outcomes. You have a wonderful faith community. But it's not important that you agree on every little thing. Your community will be stronger with voices like yours pushing at the boundaries and speaking up for marginalized people. And speaking of marginalized people, Jim, when your daughter is 15 years old, she's going to come out to you as a lesbian. And it's going to frighten you. It's okay to be scared. It's not okay to be mean. When she tells you, don't talk, just listen. Listen to her as if she's telling you the most important secret of her life because she is. And when she's done, Jim, tell her how much you love her. Make sure she knows that this changes nothing about your relationship. And save your rejection for later. You're going to find out you don't need it. You will find the strength and the courage to fe face your fears and beliefs that stand in your way, but don't take too long, Jim. You don't have as much time with her as you think. And as you begin to accept her, you're going to feel alone. 
but you're not alone. You're going to meet other parents who are loving and actively supporting their LGBTQ children. Join them. You need them. And they need you too. Finally, Jim. And there's no easy way for me to say this. But just as you were there to welcome Kat into this world, you're going to be with her when she breathes her last breath. It's not supposed to be like that. And there's nothing I can say that will make losing Kat be okay. But know this, Jim. When she leaves this life, your daughter will feel loved and completely accepted by everyone who mattered to her. And you're one of those people. And that's worth everything. Love, Jim. You know, most people, when they hear a story like mine, they think, it could never happen to me until it does. What are you going to do when it happens to you? Take my advice and save your rejection for later. You're not going to need it. Acceptance is the first step to love. Thank you.